All right, everyone, welcome back to Between Bells. With apps like Zillow and Street Easy, finding information when buying a home is now easier than ever. So how is this all impacting the real estate market overall? With us to discuss the millennial home buying market specifically is Michael Arnone, licensed real estate salesperson and managing director over at Nest Seekers International, and he joins us live. It's great to have you here. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here in the very, flat iron. Very building. dressed. Very. Is that like a whole thing in real estate? Like, what's the pressure like to like, <laughs> like nice suits? I ever tell you, like, interview you guys. He's it's a like, suit you guys guy, so, so, so he, he wants. You guys look better than I do. And Honestly, it's about it's, it's about ninety percent of the battle. Wow, you know? really? Oh, yeah, just like, just looking good with a good suit and the right, good hair. Right, right, exactly. We well, got to <laughs> convey a sense of. It sounded all like together. you know what you talk you're talking about for the most part. That's okay, so also kind let's of Let's dive that. in. How technology is changing the way people are buying homes? So, Give us a little overview here. Essentially, we're in the age of information now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the past, it used to be a tight knit group of agents and brokers who kind of controlled the flow of information. Uh, now, uh, buyers, particularly millennials, can access essentially the same information that we can with a simple search on Zillow or Street Easy or Trulia. Um, so it's great because now they kind of become like your, your assistant. They can help you. They can make suggestions. They can, uh, you know, see what the fees are, the maintenance, the, the common charges, and they can kind of help you and guide you in that way. Mm -hmm. Do you ever hear an argument from people who say, well, what do I really need a, a, a broker or an agent for if I can just go out and essentially get all this information we, myself? We, we have, hear that from people. We have heard that. Uh, okay. you know, and and it's, it's the same thing with you know, the financial markets. Uh, we saw uh, the same thing happen with E-Trade. You know, anybody can open up an E-Trade account and buy 100 shares of Apple today. Right. Uh, but unless you are actually eat, sleeping, and breathing it, um, you might make the wrong decision or you might miss out on opportunities. A good real estate agent will kind of serve as your advisor. Right. You know? Right, especially in uncharted territory. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to say, but as far as the different generations goes, millennials are using maybe these apps and this technology to help find, buy places right. or right. find places, but are the older generations, or is it really just like this is the new new wave of generation changing? Well, the older generations, you, you, you kind of need to handhold a little bit more. They're not as savvy on, uh, with the technology. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, uh, a good real estate purchase needs to serve two purposes. One, it has to be a home. It's got to be somewhere that you wake up and you're inspired. You know, you got to be able to walk out on the streets and love where you live, your favorite coffee shops, your favorite restaurants. You gotta, it's got to be a home. But also, and some may say more importantly, it's, a, it's an investment. So a good agent will know, you know, which neighborhoods you can really look to and which buildings will appreciate over time and will right. give you the best value for your money. Because you need to increase the value of your investment over the course of your years of ownership. Yeah, for most people, this is uh, the largest investment that they'll exactly. make in, in their life. Quite literally, your nest egg of what you have. Exactly. Nest seekers, nest egg. Ah, ah there you go. See, I wanted to tee up for that one. I'm glad yeah. you drove it off the tee. All right, I want to ask you about some of the coolest ways you've seen technology used in real estate. We interview people on Cheddar regularly who work with APIs, who work with holograms and some 3D stuff, and they're trying to show potential home buyers like when mm -hmm. like you can walk around and like engage what are some of the what are yes. some of the cool things that you've seen mm -hmm. now being starting to be introduced well to well vr has been has been tremendous and we're it, it hasn't been universally adopted yet but we are seeing it as a brokerage firm be cool. used more and more prevalently um, there's several scenarios in which vr is used okay. so for instance you have like your your penthouse your 10 million dollar penthouse in tribeca and then you have your buyer in hong kong who's able to put on a vr headset and kind of preview this property wow. from across the world. Um, so it works in resales where the, where the value is high enough that you would want to you know, kind of have it digitally mapped and, and put into VR. But where it's becoming more and more prevalent is uh, new developments. So essentially you can take the renderings from an architecture firm or an interior design firm mm -hmm. and you can put them into VR and you can have clients inside of the residences before they actually even exist. So yeah. we actually are implementing this on a greater and greater scale. We just launched a, a property in Greenpoint, 170 West Street, and uh, we had uh, buyers yesterday at the open house uh, touring the unfinished units mm. in VR. That's so cool. Interesting. What so about they still show up, I'm sorry, they still show up in person? But they're just not inside the actual unit. Well, okay. So, like, sometimes these, these developments will be at all different sca stages. Some of them will have model units and uh, that you can actually walk into, feel the finishes, turn on the faucet, touch wow. the couch and all that. But some of them are not there yet. And they're still, like, uh, selling pre-construction. So cool. it could just be a hole in the ground, like, somewhere on 57th Street. But you could put a VR headset in and be like, oh, this is the 47th floor. 
mm -hmm. you know? Um, what about social media? It seems like that's the new staple for advertising. Oh, social, so, social media yeah. has been tremendous. So what we've seen uh, are, are like advances in search and social in particular. Um, so have you, if, if you've ever been on, you know, Barneys.com looking for a pair of shoes, you know that even if you don't buy those shoes, those shoes are going to follow you everywhere you go uh, all yes, over the Internet do. ad infinitum forever. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're on Facebook, you're commenting on one of your friends, boom, there are the shoes. Right. So the same thing kind of is starting to apply to apartments. Mm -hmm. So at Nest Seekers, we are, you know, kind of avant-garde in our marketing strategies, and we are developing a platform um, in which anyone who integrates with our platform, our site, on any one of our listings, they'll automatically have a profile created on the database, and they'll, be, uh, they'll have remarketing that's fully integrated with social media. It's, it's, in a way, it's like borderline AI. So we'll go to the particular buyer, and let's say he's inquiring about a, an apartment in Soho for $3 million a loft. We find out then that we, from his pictures, that he's geotagged in Southampton from the previous summer, and our platform will start to offer him summer Whoa. rentals automatically. That's deep, man. That's yeah, the, I'm just saying, like that. Uh, but that I mean, of it. We know it's the way. It, we, obviously, we all know because we all use the internet. We know it's the yeah. way it works. But it's different when you hear someone say, like, "Yep, basically, we know exactly where he's been, we, and we we're going to target it. that specifically." No, but that's good to know. I mean, but that's the what way about all the? Let's scale it down to like sure. this co-sharing, co-living yes. kind of situation where people are finding you know roommates and rentals and all that stuff well the rental market uh, obviously uh, there there are people that are buying you know millennials that are buying um, they're particularly wealthy to begin with or very successful out of the gates in whatever career that they're in but then there's a healthy rental market and what we have uh, been seeing another interesting trend is is the trend in co-living mm -hmm. um, giants like we work who revolutionized the office space have made leaps forward and they tried to create we live and they're still kind of working through some of the growing pains of that um, but we're also seeing kind of uh, smaller communities uh, in, in Brooklyn and, and parts that are outside of the city that are, you know, had proof of concept with tremendous success. Uh, friends of mine have a three-story loft building in Williamsburg where they're using it as a co-living type situation. It's gorgeous. It has 12-foot ceilings with original pressed tin and exposed brick. They have, like, yoga and meditation workshops. Oh, yeah. They have a Function One sound system on the roof Sounds for day like parties on Sundays. Yeah, yeah, I live there, too. Um, good. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it's th that's what people are looking for. Like, uh, they're looking for a kind of community as far as rentals are concerned. Nice. Very exciting. All right, Michael Arnone, Managing Director over at Nest Seekers International. Google them. It's great to have you here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, everyone, coming up on Between Bells, a look at Ariana Grande's One Love Manchester Benefit Concert. We'll be right back with more Between Bells after this.